he's not in concussion protocols and you'd expect him to play against the Cats? I don't know whether he'll play against the Cats because he came off the ground with, with an issue. So we'll make sure we, we go through all that. We won't take... One thing you can be really certain around, this footy club won't take any risk with people's individual health. That's just not something we're going to do. Uh, we know that Lockie Jones has uh, been subbed out, but they're saying he's out with a migraine, not with concussion. I don't know what brought the migraine on. <laughs> I don't think either Ruckman got hands on that. Crouch to Jones. Wobbles one back on here fearlessly. He and Jones both go down. I never thought I would have said this, but apparently Razor Ray is the only person who cares about the Port Adelaide players, their health and future well-being. Razor Ray stopped play after he noticed both Lockie Jones and Alir Alir were laying on the ground, unconscious, the ball was in play, he called a stop to it, which means in the end it was a ball up. Let's take a further look at the incident. I want your thoughts on how we can stop this from happening in the future, where clubs can bypass the HIA and concussion protocols to get one player back on the field and another most likely playing next week, when both were clearly knocked out. Now let's take a look at what the so-called experts had to say on the Sunday footy show. That particular matter, Ken Hinckley was comfortable with how it played out last night, but it was uh, ugly to watch, hard to watch, and the fact that Alir wasn't put through the uh, protocols is a question that I think the industry needs to ask. OK, so what, what could come out of that statement today? I mean, could there be a... Like, there's not going to be a fine or anything like that? Is that within the power of the AFL? Because if you start issuing fines yeah. against club doctors, that uh, opens a real can of worms, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and, and club doctors do not like their practices being at all questioned and that's fine because they're professionals and I mean you, you know this doctor in question Kane I know you speak very highly of him in the, in the past but I think the way I look at it the AFL has to ask this question and yeah. I'll, I'll await the findings of what they release. Because if it's all about the optics that was a very bad optic wasn't it? It was a bad optic it was a really bad optic. Yeah. What else do you want to say about that Kane? Oh well let's move on to that. Damien Barrett obviously says a whole lot of nothing, I think, in this segment here. He's just, I guess he's sort of reporting on what the outcome has been so far, and this was before the Port Adelaide and AFL had released a statement to say that they both had gone under the first HIA assessment, but both didn't go under the SCAT test, which we will get into in just a moment. And I disagree. I think that the fans, clubs, and I guess media personnel should be able to contest the doctor's ruling. I know I'm not a doctor. I'm sure anyone on that panel is also not a doctor, but you can't tell me that both of them being knocked out, Lockie Jones with his arm stiff by his side, which is a very typical symptom of someone being knocked out or concussed, and Alir Alir completely falling to the ground with no control of his body. And then Port Adelaide's very own doctor says that Alir Alir is fine to go back out and play again, is just completely bizarre. Alir has clearly lost consciousness, his body flops completely to the ground with no control after a heavy knock like that and he's back on the oval within 7 minutes is an absolute farce. The AFL have said that they're going to continue to talk to the club but I can almost guarantee you that they will do absolutely nothing about this. It should be a fine at the very least. After all, the AFL are undergoing a massive lawsuit for not protecting the players with head injuries. Now is the time for them to make a statement on this. You don't want to make anyone an example of, but surely this is the time for the AFL to make a stand that they do care about the health and welfare of their players. Because to me so far, it looks like they're just trying to sweep it under the rug. Also, Kane Corns, completely silent. If this was any other club besides Port Adelaide, it would have a 15 minute segment of Volcano, completely dedicated about how this team is corrupt. But because it's Port Adelaide, he's quiet. In this instance, the silence is so loud. Yeah. What else do you want to say about that game? Oh, well let's move on to that. Now let's take a listen to the Ken Hinckley press conference after the game and please do remember that the doctor that is in question here is a Port Adelaide employee. So he has some bias and some reason to make sure that Alir is fine and that he can continue to play. I understand that it is his call, the doctor's call, to ensure the health and safety of the players. But you can't say that he doesn't have some sort of background motive or people pushing him because he is an employee of the Port Adelaide Football Club. Definitely seems like some sort of coercion here. Uh, the doctor was very, very comfortable that the situation was well and truly OK and that he was able to go back on. As you said, he went back out there and played the whole game. So I don't think there's too many problems with Alir other than he got beaten in badly. But he was getting beaten by Taylor Walker for a fair bit of the night. 
And now we can hear Ken talk about how Lockie Jones was subbed out of the game with a migraine and not concussion. This is a massive loophole that the AFL need to fix. The AFL have rules on this, but for some reason, these rules were not adhered to. So both Lockie Jones and Aaliyah should have been subbed out and should be unavailable to play next week. We'll take a look at those rules in just a minute. Did he fail it? No, no, Lockie, um, Lockie didn't fail the concussion test. But he didn't. He didn't come back on. We subbed him out. He, he had, in, in fact, at the end, he, he basically was subbed out with a migraine. Um, but he'd done the concussion test and he passed the concussion test. That's that's about all I can give you. And I, as I said, I don't sit on the concussion test. I don't do them. Can last time there was. Quite frankly, it just doesn't pass the pub test. You can see comments all over Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, and so on. Some of these comments say, The migraine sub is laughable. I think Port may have found a way to circumvent the 12-day concussion policy. By subbing him off with a migraine instead of concussion, he isn't under those restrictions. Another person on Facebook said, Port Adelaide football club fans should be very angry this morning. Not because they lost, but because this shows how little the club care about their own players. Winning a game is far more important than that long-term health and welfare of their players. And another person commented on a Reddit post which said that the AFL are going to continue talking to Port Adelaide to ensure that the right outcome is reached. This person said, good, it needs to be investigated and punishment for not taking care of players needs to be severe. Another person said, I've never been more disappointed in the club. I felt sick watching him go limp as he came down. Even the own supporters are against the club doctor and Ken Hinckley. In March 2023, AFL and AFLW teams were given the following information on concussion protocols. An injured player must be removed from play or training if any of the following clinical features are present. Clear diagnosis of concussion requiring immediate removal and no return to play or training. Option 1 and 2 are both Applicable to Lockie Jones and Aaliyah Aaliyah because they are loss of consciousness and no protective action in fall to ground. Especially Aaliyah Aaliyah, you can actually see that he makes no attempt to brace himself for his fall to the ground, which in my opinion is due to the loss of consciousness. So he actually has option one and two, and therefore he should have been immediately removed from the game. The clubs are given multiple reviews and video feeds of multiple actions, some of which aren't televised. The club doctor assessed this and decided that Aaliyah Aaliyah did not suit any of these options, which in my personal opinion is clear mismanagement of his role as the club doctor. Everyone was able to see this, so why did the club doctor not give Aaliyah Aaliyah a HIA or a SCAT test to ensure that he was not concussed? These were not done and he was able to return to the game, which is extremely dangerous. So moving forward, what should we do and what should the clubs do to make sure this doesn't happen again to benefit the clubs who are hiding the truth? Well, the NRL have actually started it this year. As you can see on the screen, independent doctors will sit in the NRL bunker and they can immediately sideline a player for the rest of the match if they have any concussion symptoms. Those include, but are not limited to, a player losing consciousness, falling without protecting themselves, and unsteadiness on their feet. So if this was introduced to the AFL, both Lockie Jones and Aaliyah Aaliyah would have been sent off for a HIA. Why is it the internal club doctor is the one who can decide whether a HIA is required or not? That's the way it currently sits, and it's wrong. So what are your thoughts and opinions on this? Am I totally way off base? Leave a comment below letting me know your opinions on this whole incident and what we should do moving forward. And yes, I am a Crows fan, but it doesn't matter what team, this is not acceptable. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment, subscribe if you're new, like, see you next time.